Good morning. Uh, welcome to our initial Bible study of the story of God. My name is Frank Jackson. I'm the Legacy Church Coordinator for San Antonio Baptist Association. Welcome to our study. Whether you're a doubter, a seeker, a new believer, or a seasoned Christian, I invite you to take an interactive part in this series of Bible studies designed to paint a panorama of the story of God and to aid you in discovering your role in this living and ongoing story. We will explore the story of God through the Old and New Testaments. The lessons are biblically based and taught from a Christian worldview. We trust this will be a challenging time of learning and unlearning, of understanding and becoming, as you experience God as a living, breathing presence in your life. Our textbook will be the Bible that describes itself in this way. For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, to the joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. When you're called on, uh, please share with the group three things. Your name, which of the four categories of students listed and we talked about in this first slide would you place yourself in a doubter a seeker a new believer or a seasoned christian and then the third thing is what's one thing you hope to gain by completing this study so i'm looking at so al we're just going to start with you you kind of introduce yourself and and give us uh how you see yourself as far as category and, and what you really would gain from this uh my name is al johnson um, San Antonio, Texas. I uh, would see myself as a, a seasoned Christian, I guess, if, in the four, um, but a, a Christian that's desiring to, to, to know God more and to make him known and be equipped to do that in every sphere of life. And so my hope is that as we engage in the story of God, I can see how my, you know, how that can, can manifest out into the spheres of of uh his story can be played out through my life so i think those are the right. three uh rick go ahead please well i'm rick hudson and i would consider myself uh, also a seasoned christian and i want to uh hope to uh, uh get a better understanding of the chronological view of uh of bible storytelling and be able to share that with others more effectively uh, Dr. Biggs. Good morning. I'm, I'm Charles Biggs, and uh, I would serve in the role of a new believer uh, in this capacity, uh, and I'm hoping to have a good understanding of what the Bible is all about and, and the story uh, of Jesus uh, from this perspective. But I will have to leave early, so please forgive me. Okay, well, thank you for joining with us. Eric Hilders, go ahead. Awesome, there we go. Um, I, I guess I would consider myself a seasoned Christian, but I'm always always learning, um, always growing, and I'm just here to, uh, uh, just to, to learn uh, how to tell the story of God uh, and communicate it more well, if that's a term, more well. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm here to learn. I'm here to learn, so, yeah. And Tobias, if you would. Good morning, uh, Tobias Green, um, Latham Baptist Church here. Uh, category, um, seasoned, and one thing I'd like to gain is, um, especially in this climate, resources that actually work and are effective. All right. Well, thank you very much. Some ground rules for our discussion and ground rules for our group participation. Uh, first of all, courtesy to allow others to speak, uh, respect. Uh, we're not always going to be in agreement. Privacy to keep confidences, preparation uh, to complete some assignments because as we go through the stories and as we look at the different aspects of those stories, you're going to be asked to consider some things and reflect on some things and, and share together the following week. And then freedom to ask questions because there's no such thing as a, uh, a dumb question. So here's where we begin. Before 
exploring the story of God, we need to first meet the main character. God is the creator of all things, the author of the Bible, the God who revealed, uh, who is revealed in the stories we'll be studying. So here's my question for you, and we'll come, you know, ask you to kind of just jump in and share. Or since God, from our perspective, how we're going to be presenting God, He is the supreme, highest, ultimate being. So when you think about that. What is one character quality you would expect God to have? John, what, what do you think about that? One character quality you would expect God to have. I'm sorry, go ahead, John. Joy. Joy. All right, good. Thank you very much. Hey, Eric, what about you? So one, one, one character trait I expect God to have? Yeah, if he's uh, supreme, highest, ultimate being, what's character trait you would think he would have? Uh, I would say forgiving. Forgiving. Okay. Uh, Dr. Biggs? Hi. Uh, I, uh, I would think power, the power to fix things, uh, because we need someone to fix uh, the ills of the world today. So that's what stands out to me. I want to know, can he really and will he really fix things? Amen. Good. Thank you. And uh, Al Johnson, if you would. Uh, that is good. Um, I would um, expect that and would want to see how, how so. Okay, great. Well, let's, let's start looking at some of these things as the story of God. First principle we want to share is before there was anything, before time, space, or physical matter existed, there was God. And so what we're trying to uh, understand is, in, from a biblical perspective, before anything was, before time, before space, before physical matter existed, there was God. From a biblical perspective, God was, God will always be, and as a finite person, it's a challenge to grasp the reality of God as eternal. So part of our journey in the story is the realization that he created time as well as the universe. The scripture passage, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The second thing we want to, to grasp, um, and I'm going to ask somebody if they would stare, share this scripture passage, is there's one and only one true and living God who is beyond our ability to comprehend and describe. If someone would just go ahead and, and read that scripture passage. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Part of our struggle as individuals is trying to shape a perception of what we think God is, or should be. So for our purposes, we're going to hear what God says about himself through, through the Bible. And so as we continue, what we're doing is laying a foundation of what does the Bible say about how God reveals himself to us. <clears throat> so through his story, the Bible, we know that God is spirit without beginning or end eternally self-existent if somebody would read john 4 24 uh, john 4 24 god is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth so during our study one of the great things we're going to consider is how god chose to express and reveal himself to humans so one of the things we're going to be uh, trying to do as we share together is how does god express himself how does he reveal himself to us as we continue to consider God, we come to the place of trying to understand that God is complete within himself, lacking nothing. Uh, somebody would read Exodus 3, 14 and 15. God said to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. So one of the things we 
come to understand about God is we don't need to add anything to him as he expresses himself. He expresses himself in all of who he is. And our response is going to be whether or not we're going to trust him and allow him to be who he says he is. Somebody go ahead and read Romans 11, verse 33 and 34. Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? So what we're trying to understand is, and, and this is difficult for us because we are finite beings. God is all-knowing, all-wise. He's perfect in every way. He's loving merciful and he's gracious to us so as we hear about these wonderful characteristics of god one of the things we often hear is god is love and through our study together we're going to discover how god expresses and defines what love truly is so as we lay these foundations we consider these things we come at it from the perspective that God already knows what he's doing. He already knows where he's going and he's bringing us along with him. And he is loving and merciful and gracious so that when we encounter things in our life and circumstances, to have the wisdom to pause and give ourselves a time out and then to say, Lord, my commitment to you is I know you are loving, merciful and gracious. So help me to see your hand of mercy, see how you love, and reflect that in my lifestyle as well. Okay, go ahead. Somebody read Isaiah 40, 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. So what we're saying is God is all powerful. He's not limited by anything. He's not limited by time, space, or physical matter. Somebody go ahead and read Psalm 139, seven through 10. Al, go ahead and read that, if you would please. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend, the heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. One of the exciting things of the way the Bible portrays God, portrays God as the one who is pursuing a relationship with us. You've probably heard people talk about being on a quest to find God. According to what we're going to be looking at and sharing with one another is that God is the one who has come to us, does come to us through the power and the presence of the Spirit, has demonstrated his pursuit for us as we get into some of our lessons, as we go through the Old and the New Testaments, to see that God is the one who really wants to initiate a relationship with us. And so our decision is going to have to be, are we going to allow him to do that? And are we going to yield ourselves to him in that relationship? Somebody, uh, Eric, go ahead and read uh, John 1, 3. Yeah. All things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. So, where we begin is that everything we see around us, the universe, the heavens, the earth, everything we see around us, God created everything. And apart from him, nothing came into existence. So he's not in everything, but he created everything. And therefore he sustains it and holds everything together. And those are one of the things we're gonna be uh, discussing and and considering as as we go forward. 
I'll go ahead and read Jeremiah 32, 17. Jeremiah 32, 17. Ah, O Lord God, it is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. So God's righteous. God's holy. He's almighty. He's the ruler of the universe. And I know as we consider what's going on socially and culturally, it just appears that everything is chaotic, and it is, but we can't be distracted from the fact that as we allow him to speak to us, as we allow him to lead us, we have that calm assurance that he knows what he's doing, he knows where he's going, and he's invited us along on the journey. So as we begin the story of God, these are the basic concepts and principles that, that we're going to be looking at, and these are our foundation for our further study. So today, uh, we met God in his own words. Next week, we will begin exploring the creation of the spirit world as depicted in the, the drawing that you see. So uh, as we go forward, we're going to study a panel each week. In fact, as we come to a close, what I want you to share, I want you to see, is we have a copy of different story panels that were Bible studies we're going to do each week and to request a copy of the nine statements and the Bible references from this lesson and for a personal copy of this red production of the 42 story panels send an email to me Frank J at San Antonio Baptist.org. Thank you for joining with us as we begin this adventure in the story of God. Let's have a prayer together. Gracious Heavenly Father thank you for each person that joined with us today. And as we go forward in our study, may we have this as our foundation. This is who you are. And you have chosen to join with us in this journey of life. In fact, Lord, you give us clear direction and you allow us to experience that peace of your presence, even in the midst of all the stuff we see going on around us. And help us to see that as we follow you and seek your face, Truly, you're merciful, you love us, you care for us, and we can trust you with all the anxieties and challenges in this life. And we give you the praise and glory for what you're doing in our midst, and we look forward to sharing in a time together. Amen. Okay, that's pretty much the first session. Um, and we probably went through it faster than we wanted to, but at least it gives you an idea of, I received a lesson plan, I tweaked it and added stuff. I, I wasn't sure what the time frame was gonna look like, but we kind of pulled this thing together and uh, just wanted to uh, make sure that we got the flow. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna send you a copy of these slides I'm going to send you a copy of the lesson plan, and I'm also going to send you a copy of an email that if as people would maybe join the group, then we send them an email with the nine statements and scripture passages, a copy of the story panel, and we invite them to join with us as they provide us with their email address, or if they want that the story cloth as a story cloth, uh, we can make arrangements to order that. Hey, listen, thanks guys for joining with us. And uh, I look forward to um, your insights and recommendations. Now, here's the great thing. All of this uh, is done by either PowerPoint or Word. Therefore, you can fix it, tweak it, edit it, make it yours, and figure out how you want to uh, uh, use it in, if you think it's valuable and viable for your ministry. Um, any questions right now? Are we good? Good. Good. Okay. All right. There were some folks we added to the list. I want to thank Blessy for joining in. I want to thank Tobias for joining in. I really wanted to get, because I'm an old guy, I wanted to get some young people, <laughs> young people perspective. So Eric, Blessy, Tobias, Albert, you guys are all in on this thing. So thank you so very much. Oh, you're welcome. Right. Hey, the Lord bless you. Have a great day. Thanks. Thanks, Frank. Thank you.